Wait a minute. <laughs> Buy the buck. <laughs> he fucked up already, BD. <laughs> Just buy. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so, hello, folks. Uh, can you guys <laughs> hear me? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, jeez. Okay, so uh, we're off to a good start here. Uh, my uh, intro music didn't come on, so hey, uh, yeah, we're buddy. doing good. Uh, welcome everyone to Black Dragon Biker TV. This is the Sunday uh, round table, uh, and we are glad you guys all joined us. <sighs> so we've got, uh, oh my goodness, this is the, the biggest round, uh, uh, round table we've ever had. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Who are you missing? Oh, reading and writing and arithmetic work for you. I was surprised you count that high. We were missing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we got. Uh, he didn't even take his shoes off. <laughs> we got. Uh, so, okay. Motorcycle clubs are worldwide. And uh, that was something that I didn't actually realize my first, maybe, heck, 20 years in the biker club world. Uh, I might not, I didn't really realize there are motorcycle clubs other places. I just was, you know, I, I was a San Diego biker. I, I rode with this on the San Diego bike set and, you know, my mind was only there. Um, I don't really think that I even knew how many motorcycle clubs there were in the United States. And there are literally thousands of them. So um, as I started doing Black Dragon Biker TV, I started getting all these uh, folks. The first time I, I, I started it, uh, I saw this guy named Dibber over in the UK, uh, and he was doing uh, motorcycle club protocol and knowledge and information. And I, my my mouth just hit the the ground like everything this guy is talking about is the stuff that we do. And uh, I was like, hey, wow, there's motorcycle clubs in in UK. There's motorcycle clubs everywhere. So now, as I've been doing this for a while, I have run into motorcycle clubs from Egypt to Israel to to uh, Spain, uh, Russia, Africa, you name it. There are motorcycle clubs everywhere. And we're going to do a show tonight on motorcycle clubs uh, that are all over the place. And um, we're going to um, be talking to uh, Lubos, Lubos from uh, Brazil. We've got Sven from Germany, the Black Forest in Germany. We've got... Uh, um, where is our... Our Egyptian. Here he is. He must have fallen off. back on the stream. We have Mohammed, Mohammed from Egypt. Uh, we have Dibber from the UK, and of course we got Shaggy. I don't know where the hell Shaggy's from. Uh, the U.S. of motherfucking <laughs> A. 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 We're dirty. <laughs> We got Hollywood with Insane Throttle, Wild on Twos. Uh, why don't you guys all let me take your microphones off mute? Uh, you should and, have muted and Shaggy. Like everybody. We've been off of mute, man. Uh, you guys have a good show. I was just here to say hi and stuff like that. I'll try to catch you in a little bit. I got another show I got to plan uh, for tomorrow. But you guys kill it. Yeah, stay safe there, James. Take care, Hollywood. And and, and, Hollywood. Stay, and, stay, and stay away from them production companies. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? That just happened. You know what? Next week we got to do that, man. We're gonna talk about it. I'll talk to you guys yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll do something with him about production companies. You lot now, I'll feel about those ass claims. <sighs> Dibber, you were saying? Yeah. I said, I don't know. What was I saying? I was saying, stay away from production companies. That's what I was saying. They're a bunch of ass clowns. All right. So that, here we are. And they'll stab you in the back. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so you're talking about Holly. Oh, Hollywood just left. I, I thought he was going to yeah. say something, but he's not here. So we're talking about Hollywood's recent uh, situation where uh, he got uh, stabbed in the back a little bit by the. Uh, production company that told him one well, thing and did another there was, there, was, there was actually a reason why i brought this up black dragon because you know we was going to talk about motorcycle clubs the world over and i thought I, well, i'll get that in there quick because you know 
this is something that you will find that the clubs here in the UK won't get involved with. Media. What, next week, Deborah's yeah, we, going to be we, National Geographic. We, ju- we just won't get involved with it, no matter no matter what else. And I believe my friend there in Germany is probably the same with their club scene there. They won't get involved with it. Well, I was going to say, you know, that's a good way to start off. Uh, uh, you know, social media has taken such a big platform these days, especially here in the United States. You know, these youngsters, man, they, they uh, look at everything from YouTube to Google to, you know, hell, you don't even get cable TV hardly anymore. You don't really need it. You can go Roku or uh, these fire sticks and shit like that. So, yeah, we'll start up there with Sven. How is it over there with the... Uh, biker scene in the MC culture when it comes to social media and it comes to uh, how these things are done uh, well a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the clubs I know that I've you know known for a long time a lot of them won't uh, have any involvement in social media obviously there are those that do but um, you know uh, you know over this side the clubs will set the rule whether or not you can be involved with social media or not what about you guys up there? Lubus, we'll start with you. What do you think? About motorcycle clubs and social media? Well, uh, <clears throat> here in Brazil, it's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing because we are kind of the, the joke of the biker world, you know? And uh, a few people... I have never heard one Brazil joke yet, so tell me one. Um, <laughs> don't, don't mind shaggy <laughs> yeah no, no. what i'm trying what i'm trying to say is that um there is a few people here that is, is trying to do the right thing you know but every single thing we do there's always someone to tell us they tell that we're wrong that we shouldn't do that because that is uh just being copycat of the united states you know? but God damn it! That's that's where the, the whole thing started, right? So we had to copy them. I knew Dear uh, was going to start shaking his head. No. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And, uh, so they use the, the, the social media to, you know, get numbers. Social media to recruit some people here, and that's something that uh, it's unacceptable. You know, you have to do it the right way. You have to do it. Um, the the. God damn it, I hate when the, the words don't... Anyway, you have to do it the traditional way, right? There you you have to get the, the, the guy and put him to the test and make him do stuff for the club to see if he fits. And that's the right way. And social media is good because when you are uh, 99%, like my club is, sometimes we do some uh, charity work and we use social media to prove that to those people who helped us that, hey, that, that help you gave us, here it is. This, this is what we've done with it, right? And that's it. But uh, when you start to recruit people over the, the, the social media, that's when you cross the line. Hmm. I mean, that's one of the times when you cross the line because down here in Brazil, people cross the line every time, man. And that's, it's frustrating. You know, so, you so- try to keep... The, is Brazil pretty new to the to the motorcycle club world? How old would you say your new, oldest motorcycle club is? Do you know? Well, there's uh, there is a one motorcycle club that started in, I believe, in the 30s, mm-hmm. called Brazil Motors uh, Brazil Motorcycle Club. But it's it was a racing club. You know, it wasn't a motorcycle club as we know today. Uh, there is the Zapata Motorcycle Club. It's one of the oldest, one of the most respected motorcycle club here. And so they, 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 they keep the tradition, you know, no women allowed in all this, the, this traditional stuff. But every time there is a new club that they think that they can do anything because no one can touch them because they always can go to the police, they always can sue us and you know it's 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 a cowardly thing happening here in brazil because you don't have your uh, a word anymore you know a man is all about his word if you don't have your word if you don't honor your word then what kind of man you are right if you if you're willing to enter a world where you have to do something where you have to act uh you know some way 
where you have to respect certain traditions and certain rules, you have to, to commit to that. So don't give me the shit that, well, you can touch my vest because I'm going to call the police on you. Man, fuck you, you know. Is, <laughs> uh, they call the police? They're, they're police callers over there? I mean, uh, okay, everything no. you said so far lot. sounds very biker, sounds very clever to me. Until you said, you touch my vest, I'll call the police. No, you touch my yeah. vest, I'll kick your ass. That, yeah. That's the way we do it over here. <laughs> because here in Brazil, here in Brazil, we have a problem. Uh, unlike United States, we do not have the right to bear arms here, you know? So we don't either, but there's these things. That's right. Yeah, that's it's, right. You know, the, the, the rule of the jungle, right? The strongest gets it all. And people don't respect that anymore. They don't have uh, honor. It's, it's a strange thing, you know, to keep talking about honor. But man, it's, it's what we have today, right? It's, I mean, here in Brazil, we are poor, we are fucked. And the only thing we have is our motorcycle clubs and our honor. And some people don't even, you know, give a shit about honor. And that's, it's frustrating to say the least, you know? So here in Brazil, it's a little chaos that we're trying to fix, but we know it's going to take a long time. So tell us your name and, and uh, where are you from? What's your, what's your motorcycle club? And you guys just got motorcycle club status, right? Yeah, it's it was in February, if I'm not mistaken. So you well, started uh, out as a uh, as an RC, and you uh, went through all the steps. And uh, well, here in Brazil, here in Brazil, we we started as a motorcycle group, you know, just mm -hmm. a, a group of people who rides a motorcycle. And but always, we since we started, we were always. Um, how can I say that? Uh, some motorcycle club always were there to help us, to show us the way, to teach us what's right and what's wrong. So since the beginning, we were acting like a motorcycle club. And it was when one of these, one of the oldest motorcycle clubs here in Brazil, I mean, it's not one of the, the oldest, but one of the most respected motorcycle clubs here in Brazil, when they come to us and they say, dude, you acting like a club. You have, you know, followed the traditions like a motorcycle club. Why the hell do you still carry this group on your back? It's time for you to change from group to club, you know? And that's what, that's when we did it. When we didn't ask for permission, someone, a uh, one percenter club came to us and they said, well, change it. It's time, you're ready. So we did, you know, and, uh, Cool stuff, my yeah. name, my, my actual name is Ricardo. It's uh, pretty, I don't know, pretty, <laughs> pretty South American name. I, I don't know. It's and uh, we're from a city called uh, Rio Claro, which means clear river. There was a, a beautiful river here, and now this, they you know fucked it up. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they that sounds a, American too. God, you, I mean, you're batting they, a thousand. They built going. Mm -hmm. They built an avenue over the river, and the, the river is gone now. And uh, we are from the the state of São Paulo, one of the, I mean, the biggest state here in Brazil, the one one of the richest, one of the most productive states here in Brazil. And we're, we're still little, man. We're still learning. I watch uh, Wild on Choose all the time. I watch Black Dragon all the time, and I'm I'm still learning. You know, still trying to figure things out and how to translate here for the, the Brazilian writers so we can follow the, the, the traditions, follow the old school way, because at the end of the day, that's the right way. And that's that's my job, you know, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to fix this shit up along with one or two other YouTubers, but it's, it's been a hard work, man. It's been a difficult struggle not everyone is open to accept things as they are they are trying to make something new and call it motorcycle club and it's been a hard time to accept that well there's a bit of advice for you you know these these ones that like to run to the police yeah all you clubs that like to do things the old way just don't have anything to do with them that's right yeah. 
don't even give them the time of day if they come up and ask you what the time of day is. Just turn your back on them and walk away. If they won't do things the right way, if they run to the police, you don't have nothing to do with them at all. Yeah. That's a, a great don't advice. Eat, don't, eat, don't even talk to them. That's like if there's cop clubs and stuff you run into, you know, uh, you turn your back on them and walk away. They're a conflict of interest. They're, they're, they're just a bunch of bullshit. They, they, uh, they make no sense, cop club. I'm going to arrest you during the week and, and screw with you all week long, but they come Friday night. I'm going to throw a set of outlaw colors on and I'm going to be Mr. Billy Badass. Well, you know, it don't work that way. Yeah. And, and you get and you get it everywhere, right? You get on a comment section, like some people are keyboard warriors, and, and they don't have a picture in the little on the side there. And I always say, if you if you if you're gonna hide your face on the internet and talk trash, you're a coward to me in general. I mean, that's just. I mean, yeah. I don't take things seriously. I'm not gonna get my. It's not. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over anything. But like some people said, I mean, YouTube, social media, Facebook, whatever. I think stuff like we're doing today is actually the positive part about social media. What yeah. the hell are oh, you yeah, gonna yeah. see? I mean, when I mean, you're gonna see from Germany, Egypt, uh, UK, US, so let's, uh, together talking. You know. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's talk next to uh, our uh, our guest from um, Egypt. Um, Muhammad has been like very quiet. So Muhammad, welcome to the show, man. Uh, tell us the name of your you. motorcycle. Thank you for having me. First, you know, first of all, just thanks so much for being. I've made friends with many of your brothers on uh, on my. Uh, Facebook and YouTube, and I just appreciate having you guys and appreciate that you would be on at old dark 30 in the morning. I don't know what time it is there, but um, just, uh, you know, let everyone know that we're so thankful for you to come on. So tell us about you, man. Uh, my name is Mohammed. Uh, I am from Cairo, Egypt, which is the capital of Egypt. Um, my, I belong to Horus Reapers Motorcycle Club, which is Horus Reapers uh, with the art, uh, not with the, because I know how it sounds. Um, uh, even in Egypt, everything is is different. Um, the the scene is is quite new, actually. Um, I think uh, the oldest club in Egypt is like five years old, or maybe like six. So everything everything in Egypt is different, uh, especially that uh, we uh, as Egyptians Egyptianize everything. We do everything in Egyptian way. Like we try to set up a traditional Egyptian club. It's very hard in Egypt because the mentality, uh, the way people think, is completely different from any other place. Uh, that, that's the main problem that you you would have as a traditional uh, martial art club. Um, people in Egypt don't think straight. Uh, we have the same problems as Brazil. Uh, people call the police. Uh, people will pop up with a new club whenever they want. There's, there's no there's no like. Uh, how do you say? It? There's, there's, there's no. Um, I don't know how to say it in English. But there's, there's no way you can, you can, you can, you can handle these guys. It's very hard because everybody no thinks protocols. you can do whatever you want. There's no protocols. Yes, there's exactly. A what? No what? Yeah. Protocol. Protocol. No protocols. No yes. protocols. Myself yeah. and Mohammed, we we've got a lineage. There, you know, part of my family comes from your country. Yeah, that's yeah, really an, from ancient times. Yeah. Part, yeah, of my that's, lineage, that's part, part of my lineage comes from your country. My great great grandfather's family. Oh, they they are Coptic, so they they come yeah. from your land. <laughs> yeah, so so to go on and keep uh, talking uh, about the main problem we facing uh, as uh, as. Uh, as David said, that we don't have protocols. Um, it's very, very hard to sit down and talk to other people. Everybody in Egypt does whatever he wants. And uh, and if you talk to everybody, you're not going to have time to ride. That, that's the main problem. Like, if you want to ride, like, you want to be a, a traditional motorcycle club, well, you want to do things right. Uh, the time that you can, you know, the, you know, the time that you have is way, way better spent riding and doing the stuff. You like and do it right. And if you pay attention to everybody around you, you'll not do anything. That's that's the, the basic the basic thing. And then the, about the, the the internet in Egypt, it's 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 fairly new. Uh, not the internet, but as in, as in you guys were talking about the the, the issues, it's, it's fairly new uh, for us as a motorcycle scene and uh, 
and there's just more to check with Sid. So we don't face the same problems uh, we are faced in Berlin or uh, or the US. That's it, basically. What kind of motorcycles do you guys ride over there? I'm always kind of curious about that. I mean, in UK, you know, we right just talked about the different things, yeah. So you guys have yeah, the Harleys well, there, the Kawasaki, the Hondas, all that stuff. Oh, right on. Yes, uh, and Indians, uh, Indian yeah, motorcycles yeah. as well. Yeah. Right on. What, what kind of bike do you ride? I ride an Indian. All right, good uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Cool. What what kind of Indian you got? I ride the the dog chief. Uh, yeah, dog horse. Yeah. Uh, the chief, of course. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's get up to. I appreciate you, uh, uh, Muhammad. We, we got more for you. So let's get up here to Sven up there in the Black Forest of Germany. What's up, man? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for invitation, John uh, BD. <laughs> Thank you. All good. A bit Tell early about, now, uh, but motorcycle clubs in Germany and how things go and um, like very traditional way very similar to the States uh, a lot of the clubs over here were founded by um, GIs who were um, over here on deploy in the 60s and 70s and um, so it's a lot of very similar to the United States motorcycle set to the protocol but the same, like Lubis said, um, we have the same problems. Um, until 2017, a lot of uh, clubs put everything on the social media, everything you can think of, YouTube, the, all the channels. And uh, after the big four or five clubs, diamond clubs in Germany um, were banned uh, to fly colors, um, a lot of clubs reduced this and said, okay, we, we only make promotion for the club, but the years before they put a lot of details about the club life, about the club setup on the social media. But uh, we have a lot of old clubs over here. Some clubs like, um, I dropped that one name now as uh, the Black Devils who are around down here in the Southwest. Uh, they are more than 50 years old. It's one of the oldest German clubs and uh, still growing. That is really cool. Yep. Um, how long have you been riding around and uh, what kind of motorcycle or motorcycles do you have? Um, I, right now I ride a Harley Davidson FXSTC from 1990. Um, my first one was a Yamaha RX80 Special Edition. This was this kind of mini bike. I guess it's 80 cubic centimeters. It's maybe 30 cubic inch or something. It's when you are 15, 16 years old, you can ride this in Germany. And uh, then there uh, came up a Kawasaki 440 Limited, and then a Virago 750, and then uh, 1200 uh, Harley Davidson Shovelhead. And then the there you go. SDC. Yeah. Normal bike career, I would say. <laughs> so I want you to know I still have the uh, things you sent me to get my beard like yours. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> guy, the, beard, yeah. the clip on? No, no. <laughs> I'm saying for no, BD. No, 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 they're little. Yeah, real funny. They're, they're little skulls. They're yep. cool as hell, and uh, I'm, but Tia keeps trimming my damn beard when I'm asleep. So, anyway, <laughs> we're gonna get this. Oh. We're gonna get this too. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then we have Dibber down in the UK, and uh, uh, Dibber, how you know uh, is your uh, sit, uh, you know what 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 is the motorcycle club scene like down in the UK? It's old school. It hasn't really changed much. It, it depends if you. It depends what part of the scene you're looking at, because as I've said in my videos, we've got a very multi-layered club scene. We've got like everything from like family clubs through to riders clubs through to owners clubs. We've got an assortment of different types of MCCs, and then we've got your backpatch brotherhoods, your backpatch MCs, and then your three-piece, you know, obviously your diamond clubs. So it's, but when you're looking at the actual MCs, the backpatch clubs. Not really much has changed. It's still very, very old school traditional amongst amongst the three piece backpacks clubs and the one percenters. 
It's, right. it's ba barely changed, really. The real, real changes have happened more in the social type clubs. And there's a lot of changes that have gone on within the MCC scene that I, 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 I can't tolerate because that's where I started. There's a bad echo. It can't be from me because I've got my headphones in. Um, chest, chest, chest. Yeah, something's going wrong. Let me see. You guys can. It ain't me. I don't have all them buttons. It's just a hollowness in between your head. Right? It's a metal plate. Yeah, we we uh, over here we've just we've just tried to keep everything you know as old school traditional as the MC as possible. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about some of the fun things. For instance, whoa, what on earth? Boy, this wouldn't be a show without technical difficulties. It's going to be a good one. Hmm. I don't see. Yeah, usually we're the ones that have this good show. <laughs> have you not been watching since we started this? I mean, <laughs> but we didn't do anything. We... Hey, you forgot to ask Tank and Dirty. They're up there in the Great White Northern North of Chicago. That's a tough Florida, country up there. I mean. You know, we don't have Hollywood on here in his own country of Chicago. So, I mean, the guys that are up north of Chicago, they're, they're, they got their own country. Yeah, Look at the politics. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh... Well, that's right. You're, you're down for your snowbird, and I forgot about that. I think everybody can put mute and go one by one off. Oh, man. Wow. Rules and shit. All right, how's it going? Oh, There's somebody in the room got their, their audio turned up. I don't get an echo on my end, if that means anything. Sure. I, it's not here. Hey, it's gone. Is it gone? Yeah, it's oh, it's probably the fans are listening in. We got people from other countries here. No, it's you again. <laughs> it's you. No. I was on mute. No. I've been on mute all the time. See, this is what happens when you get too technical. Yeah, I got headphones on, so it's not mine. Uh, well, huh, <laughs> Riveting TV. Man. I think no, Mohammed's got his headphones on. Yeah, see, Mohammed's got his headphones in. Let me mute everybody and see if it goes away. So it's gone away. Unmute Dibber. Say something. One two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Unmute Wild. Wild, unmute yourself. Yeah, buddy. Unmute Shaggy. Shaggy, I say something. I told you it wasn't me. <laughs> this is a great game. Unmute Tank. Tank, say something. <laughs> something. Unmute say Dirty. Something. Dirty, say something. Say something. Okay. See, well, dirty Finn. follows instructions. Say something, Sven. Sven? This is something, something. <laughs> and, uh, unmute yourself, uh, Lubus. Can you hear say me? Say something. And then, uh, Muhammad, say something. Everybody's okay, so <laughs> now it's gone away. That's crazy. That uh, means it's on your end. Yeah, it's your it's your click nickel, mate. I I've done nothing. I'm gonna hire. Oh, I don't know. We were talking earlier, and your click knowledge kept conking out. So you know, you need to address your click knowledge, mate. <sighs> Something about that clicking thing, like clicking mouses, and wait a minute, that's so totally different subject. Sorry about that. Yeah. Click knowledge, mate. <laughs> Are we talking about the click? Never mind. Keep going. 
fuck if you knew how much money I spent on this dumb shit. Anyway, See? uh money can't buy happiness. Look how miserable you are every week I'm, I'm fucking with that thing. Absolutely miserable. Uh so um let's uh we were talking about something. So anyway, tank and dirty. Uh so talk about your experiences, you know, so the rest of the world is looking. Tell us tell us about how American clubs work, how uh, United States clubs work, and, and, you know, your kind of fascination or whatever. With that, what's drawing you to the lifestyle? <laughs> Go ahead, Dirty. <laughs> well, you know, Wisconsin, we're just, a, you know, we're like every other state in the Midwest. You know, uh, well, this country, really. I mean, everything's uh, pretty much traditional if you're doing things on the up and up. I mean, we all see news stories or other YouTube channels that talk about clubs that kind of fuck around and do things that they, you know, aren't supposed to do or they break protocols or whatever. But I mean, you know, here in America, it, you know, every state kind of runs the same way in some way, shape or form. I mean, there's always a little bit of nuance when it comes to regions and areas, but for the most part, it's all pretty much the same, you know. Yeah, it's all changing. It ain't for the better. Yeah, well, yeah, for certain, that. yeah, certain states, you know, it gets a little loosey-goosey and it's kind of weird. But, like, I'll say this. Wisconsin, it's like it's always like it's always uh, been. You know what I mean? Like, nothing's changed. Um, yeah. Politically, that's all I can say. You know, That I mean? was so correct. Yeah. Nothing's fucking changed. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Your, See what I did there? I saw club? what you did there, yeah. <laughs> Muhammad, how old is your club? Oh, man. <laughs> Muhammad, how old is your club? Okay. How old is your club? That means it's about uh, um, two years old. And what, what drew you to want to, to join a motorcycle club? What brought you to the biker life in a, in a motorcycle club way? Um, well, basically, I, I always felt like I, I wanted to belong to something that's bigger than me. I wanted to do something with people that think the same as me. People that we connected on the same level, basically. That That's the main thing. But uh, a biker club, I mean, uh, let me ask you this. Do biker clubs have a negative stereotype where you come from? Are they looked at as no, criminal? No, no, no. Okay. No, definitely not, no. And uh, do police profile you and pull you over and harass you or anything no, like that? We don't have that beach. We don't get pulled over. No. Uh, hey, I, I, I want to know, do you guys ride in them robes or you got you got traditional biker shit you wear? <laughs> I don't think you heard me. I want to be right. Hey, right. Oh, go ahead. Man. Well, I've, I'm, uh, I've looked at pictures. They ride in leathers like we do. Holy in the desert, damn. Yeah. How hot is that? Fuck. Well, Arizona's hot, I guess. So yeah. Yeah. yeah every, every place is hot <laughs> in the summer, That's but you better have them damn leathers on. Um. So uh, let me ask, let me ask you, Lubis. What, what do uh, how are motorcycle clubs in Brazil looked at in terms of um, reputation? Are they thought of as criminal organizations, or you know, how does the news treat you guys? Well, uh, we're not seen as a criminal organization, but we are, you know, kind of outcasts on the society because uh, people see us as a bunch of uh, how can I say that. Uh, a bunch of people who, you know, don't work and don't shower and, uh, you know, heathens. drink and do drugs. You guys are looking and... at as heathens. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry, man. My, my vocabulary is very short, you know. But, oh, I got a big one, uh, so we could do this all night. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a, a, a downside to being a motorcycle club, you know. Uh, when you're riding, uh, you, you get a, the attention of the kids, for instance, but their parents is like, no, don't look at that. I don't want to be part of that when you grow up. And uh, that only changes when that that person that is, you know, it's kind of uh, prejudice, I think is the word. And uh, they need some food, for instance, and we go there and, you know, we donate some food. Then they think about it twice and they say, well, they, they're not 
you know, a bunch of assholes after all. They, they're here to help. But it's it's rare, man. You know, we don't have any troubles with the police. We don't have any troubles uh, with the news. But in society still looks at us, you know, uh, looks down at us. That's it's something that I don't know if it's worth changing because uh, some way it gets us uh, some kind of respect because you, you're not going to mess with something that you don't like and especially something that you don't know because people think we're, you know, even if it's, if it's forbidden here in Brazil, people think that we're carrying guns, uh, you know, and sometimes it's, it's a good thing because it avoids uh, kind of traffic violence, you know, when something happens on the traffic, people don't come at us. They think twice before they try to do something to our motorcycle and stuff. But it's, you know, it's kind of, uh, here we call on the wall, not in the good side and not on the bad side. It's, you know, right there in the middle. It has its good moments and has the bad moments. So, Sven, tell us about uh, what's the perception of bikers in Germany overall? Do you guys have uh, issues like uh, we do with profiling cops, anything like that, or is everything all honky dory? Uh, no, not in that um, on that level like you have in the states. But uh, since um, the big diamond clubs in Germany were forbidden. Everyone who's tattooed writes a Harley and uh, wears a leather cut is um, strange to the public more more than before. And uh, TV shows like Sons of Anarchy, Mayans and so on, uh, and uh, media, the news uh, will serve the rest to the public. So if I, when I go to work, and and uh, and enter the building all the folks will look like <gasps> they know me for years i never hit anybody with uh, i don't know what or they they still like mm, i keep a little security distance it's, it's the same like lubis said it's it's they they know you for years but they don't trust you at all that's it's always this little percentage that they don't trust you at all it's, it's still mm, he's maybe maybe he's a gangster they know you for years, for decades, and they say... Uh, Sounds like the States, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked in hospital for more than 20 years uh, in the surgical theater, and uh, I worked there with some guys for, for, for more than five or six years with doctors, uh, anesthetics, and so on, and, and they still don't trust you at all, still looking with this special look at you, you know, these... The narcotics goes missing. They look at you, man. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> no, you you know it all. It's it's you go to the supermarket uh, or whatever uh, uh, home improvement store and uh, you play Mos Moses. You you divide the waters. You know, all, everyone's turning besides and saying, "Oh, let them through, let them through. Don't get in trouble with them." So it's it's. Now that can be good or bad, you know. Yeah, I like yeah, to be left the fuck alone. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's 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 real good. You you have you're in the dark street. Everyone changes the side of the street. The pedestrians walk, uh, changes to the other side, and you say, "Okay, it's your 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 choice." I don't bite anyone's head off, but um, so you have it a clear, safe way back home. But sometimes, if you have a bad day, and I guess all you guys know such days. You have some trouble at work, you have uh, trouble with your wife or your girl or your kids. And then you get these certain looks on you, you feel them in your on your back. And then you think, hey, fuck, I never did anybody any harm. And why are these mofos looking at me like I'm uh, uh, the personalized devil in person? So, Well, see, I like those looks because then you just look at them... Uh right back and they usually pee themselves a little bit and then you start laughing and my day gets better yeah <laughs> sometimes it's make it makes your day oh of course of course <laughs> <laughs> you know sometimes you just got to take people's stupidity and throw it right back at them you know what i'm saying yeah uh, you can't help but do that i mean when when they start giving you those looks and they start getting like oh my god here comes the bad guy 
you know, uh, my favorite line from that movie, Scarface, well, say hello to the bad guy. Yeah, that's me. I don't find it, you know. Uh, uh, it 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 makes the day better. It makes me laugh. It's like Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I was going to ask, uh, then I got to be good going. But it, of course, the uh, process I was asking about the prospecting phase in other countries. Um, I mean, I mean, I speak to Dibber a lot, so I know how the UK. But how does for Mohammed, since being a new club to Egypt uh, itself? Do you guys accept uh, go through a prospecting stage early on to get everything established, or are you guys just getting guys on and patching them in to kind of build yourselves? I mean, how do you guys do it over there? Of course, we do we do it the traditional way. You have to be a prospect for a set a set amount of time. You have to go through everything that you're asked of. Uh, at the end of the end of your prospecting time, then you get evaluated. Uh, if you're good, if you're not good, and uh, if there's a problem, then you can be there. The, the, the prospecting period can be extended even more. Um, that that's that's basically it. Man, I dig how you said that too, man. You said a period of time. Yeah, people don't need to know what that period of time is. That's for the internal with the club. That's club business, man. Outstanding. And then I like how you said if there's a problem, the time's going to be extended. Outstanding. That's as traditional as traditional can get, right there. Yeah, man, that's that's, awesome. that's that's old school, isn't it? That's Hell old school, yeah, right it is. Man, I got goosebumps now. Right on. Yeah. You get goosebumps? Yeah, it gives <laughs> oh, you a shiver. Man. It gives you a shiver, man. When people it say does. old school, you know, young guys like that, and a young club and a young club environment, and they're getting it right to start off, man. That's awesome. I'll, I'll have to take a trip to Egypt now. To check it you, out, you, you gotta know, go see there. these guys' website. I, I mean, their uh, Facebook page. I mean, these I guys did earlier. I rhyme. did earlier when we, when we were talking, didn't I? I went across and checked out the website and everything. Yep. The Facebook. Yep. yep. You know, so, next next time next time I go out to see my friends out there in the Holy Lands, I'll have to make a detour out to Egypt afterwards. You're most go welcome. Check, you're go most go welcome. check out Mohammed and his brothers. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so. Most welcome. Uh, some things that I hear that are interesting that uh, I hear that 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 I would say are very similar to the United States and some of the problems we have. Um, you guys are, are not alone in having uh, pop up clubs that just pop up and pop onto the scene and uh, guys trying to change things, guys trying to, to, to come up and 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 change the traditional set. Um, uh, a lot of the reason that a lot of us have these programs is that we're trying to talk about things uh, the way that they should be. Uh, so it's interesting to me that a club where things are new, our country where things are newly starting uh, would have similar problems to a country where things have been going on for quite some time. Uh, but I am curious, Dibber, in your country, do do are there pop-up clubs that just spring up and yeah 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 they are but they don't really stick around for long usually like i say we've got a well organized and well oiled machine over here you know you you know uh, the, the whole country is broken up into areas it's regional coalitions and alliances so if you just pop up you know and like i say it's uh we've got a multi-layered club scene over here so and you know i'm not going to go into detail of how things are done over here anyway absolutely um but so, you know uh, it's but yeah. i mean there are clubs that will just pop up but you know you know as well as what i do usually clubs that just pop up like that that don't work for it or anything like that they don't usually hang around for long no nor do the members uh you know, let me ask you this um, <laughs> so i'll ask you this of lubis <laughs> and spin and muhammad they fell down a stair, um, flight of stairs, did they? <laughs> well, guys, I, I just want to be. I'm going to be taking off. I had a long day, uh, six hour flight back here. So you guys, Shaggy, BD, Lubis, six uh, hour flight. Don't everybody. you fly for entertainment? No, well, you fly for fun. What do you mean? I flew myself back from Florida. It was so hours. that wasn't fun. That was that wasn't hard. That was fun. Oh, it was storm. It was. It was, it was, it was huh. pretty stormy, so it was pretty. Uh, oh, it, it was stormy. I had to. You know, oh, why was me? Oh, I want to see your thing. <laughs> you know how? Hey, you know how many sit downs I had in planes, and the person I'm with suddenly turns into a little kid, like scared kid. <laughs> well, maybe because you're not. Great time to let go of the joystick. <laughs> 
Go on, let's break out the violins, eh? <laughs> it's like it's, 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 it's like a country, it's like a country song about it. <laughs> we'll write a country song about it for you. There we go. Oh, Wild. All right, Deborah, you're the one scared coming to the US, man. I don't want to keep inviting you. Come on, man. I ain't going to come to your country and piss around with your TSA. You can get lost, man. <laughs> they don't have anything Look, to do, I promise you. So They'll only search the cavity once. I mean, once He's they find what, nothing, you'll right. be all right. They just, <laughs> they just, they just, they'll jerk on his butt. That's one. It's going right, to yeah, feel a little bit of pressure. I don't want him checking out my ring of fire. <laughs> what you might bring has been legalized over here probably in half of the states so all right man oh he's gone all right so uh uh what was i gonna say before uh, i forgot um but i was i was thinking yeah so we i see a lot of things that are similar i was gonna ask you uh lubis Sven, and uh muhammad so is it a uh is it a must in your countries that you have a motorcycle to be in a motorcycle club or is it more social? Whereas, uh, Oh, look at that. that the looks you just got moment. outstanding. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's a force. It's a must. It's a motorcycle club. Outstanding answer. Outstanding hey! answer. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it, motherfucker. Yeah, none <laughs> you know of this fucking, none, none of this bike count BS, eh? Right. Hey, Shaggy, none of this bike counting stuff. Having That's a meeting right. and then counting the bikes who turned right. up on a bike. Yeah. Oh, God damn. Oh. It happens. You yeah, know, I, I, tell you, I, I couldn't. I couldn't believe. I tell you what, John, I couldn't believe that when that came up and they were talking about doing bike counts and all this and people having to borrow bikes off of other brothers so that they could prove that they had were riding a bike. And I tell you, man, I, I, I didn't know which way to look when I was. I didn't know, either, I, and I'm from here. I was like, okay, what the fucking hell? Yeah. <laughs> uh, to to be honest, that is that came from a new. That was a new set, a new biker set in the United well, States. Well, no, that was a new let's pretend that we're bikers and all That's share right. a bike set. That's right. You know. I'll tell you what, you wouldn't get away with that over here, I'm telling you. Hey, it's a community motorcycle, kind of like the pass around. <laughs> 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 it's, your, it's your turn tomorrow. <laughs> wow. So, uh, what about. Make sure there? you clean the seat off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my word. Uh, so, uh, Lubis, uh, before we descend into chaos here, uh, what about up there? Um, do, are folks on that? You got to have a bike to be in a club, or do you see uh, some backsliding or whatever? Well, as I said, man, uh, sometimes uh, Brazilian motorcycle clubs are a joke. You know, we have a lot of uh, traditional motorcycle clubs that they do not accept any members who do not own a motorcycle. Uh, but there are some so-called motorcycle clubs, you know, and they. Well, they, they accept anything. You know? they, turn up, they turn up at the bar with a crash helmet on their shoulder and no, on their arm and no bike. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's ridiculous, you know. The, the thing is, there is a lot of motorcycle clubs here in Brazil that the only thing they think of is numbers. They, yeah. want, they want more people inside of motorcycle clubs. They want more money coming in. So if you don't have any motorcycle clubs, well, there, I mean, if you don't have any motorcycle, that's no problem, man. You just, you know, here you go, your full cut, your all the, the, the patches in and fuck it. But fuck that. as, as I said, we, we, the Motorhead Motorcycle Club, we try to follow the most tradi traditional motorcycle club uh, rules, you know? Uh, the only exception that we made here in Motorcycle Club was to myself, because when I was 15 years old, I had a shoulder cancer. 
and I don't know if you guys can hear it, but my left shoulder is is uh, prosthetic, and we were, as I said before, we were uh, a motorcycle group, so it was kind of okay because you no, know, my father was one of the founders, and you know I I grew with the motorcycle club, and when we we were we were switching from motorcycle group to motorcycle club. I asked all my, my brothers, is this going to be a problem? And to my surprise, they say, well, man, you, you're not. Uh, it's not that you do not want to ride a motorcycle. You can't ride a motorcycle. So that's kind of different. Well, but, what about a trike? Can't, can't you ride a trike? Well, here in Brazil, it's kind of hard to get a trike. You know, we don't have those uh, Harley Davidson trikes, you know, we have to build our own. But the good news is but you've had I some recent it. you've had some recent really great news. Yes. And so, that's the point yeah, where share, I'm getting share that because I, yeah. I think uh, I, I'm I'm really excited about that and um, for you. And yeah, I'm, man, I'm, 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 I'm very excited about it. Thanks to my YouTube channel, I found a guy who's uh, he has a, a I don't know a, a chop shop. I don't know if you call it that. And he said, man, I'm going to build you a motorcycle. And it's not going to be a trike. It's going to be a motorcycle that you are going to be able to ride. So starting next year, I'm going to, you know, get her some money and do some shit to start building my own motorcycle, man. And then I, I'm going to, you know, stop being the, the, the weird one inside Motorhead Motorcycle Club. Uh, and I'll, that kind of reminds me, you know, one of my old brothers years and years ago, he had a, a really, really t nasty motorcycle accident and he tore the nerves from his spinal column from one of his arms. So he lost the full use of his arm. It was just like a dead arm from like the shoulder. So what you're saying kind of sort of brought back some old memories of, of one of my old brothers and he, he, he went through it all himself. You know, he, he, he had all of the controls and everything were all put onto one side of the handlebar. So he had a brake and a clutch all on one handlebar, yeah. you know. And this arm, he would have a glove with Velcro on it. Yeah, and he had Velcro on the handlebar grip and he would like take his hand out and fix it onto the handlebar and control it all from, you know, from yeah. one hand. So it's, it's dead. It's absolutely possible. I've seen it done. Yeah. I've seen it done yeah. more than once. So yeah, good on you, man. Rock yeah, on. So, uh, yes. Thank and so you, what man. I've decided to do is, um, uh, as he, you know, as he finds out about this bike next year, uh, when they start getting ready to, to, to do whatever they're going to do, I've decided that, well, you know, I'm going to do the best I can with my channel and, uh, uh, our, our subscribers, and we're going to try to help them fund that bike so you can get up and oh, get running. And riding, so uh, <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. But if the heart's there, I mean, I'll throw a few quid in. Thank quitting. you, man. Thank you, man. So look, I mean, the whole panel's on with you, man. So yeah, I'm I appreciate sure that. I, I was, I would never have said anything, but I'm glad you did. That's so. that's, you know, that's the kind of of stuff that we miss here in Brazil. We don't have this unity, you know. It's just uh, ego over ego, and every man for himself. <laughs> And that's kind of bullshit needs to stop. We need to start being more like we are being here right now. And I appreciate it. And I really do, man. And I promise I'm not going to cry about it. <laughs> Go on, of you guys. It's a great honor, man. It's, I feel very honored and I feel very blessed to know you guys because without the internet, we were talking about social media and motorcycle clubs and without the internet this right here wouldn't be possible man. thank you very much thank you all yeah that's a, that's a positive side yep yeah, yeah. as it's time as it's time and its place that's right yeah and i think this has got to be like a a first or something close to it maybe uh all these different clubs listen we got a question for uh muhammad what are popular motorcycle mod modifications over there in egypt is building or modifying your own motorcycles or parts uh, there that you like? I guess that's what they're saying. So, uh, do you do you guys do a lot of modifications over there? Yeah, of course. Uh, 
mainly we buy uh, we buy the parts because uh, again uh, the motorcycles that we ride uh, the parts are not available easily so the best thing you do is you order it uh, uh, online and when it arrives you fix it uh, we, we do handlebars we do uh, do mufflers we do seats we do everything uh, people even people build their own bikes like they get chassis and they build the whole thing so wow every that's cool so is 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 being a biker over there a uh a uh a sport for the uh for the rich man i mean does is that is, is, it seems like if everything would be hard to get it's kind of a pricey sport to get into yes of course uh, um, uh, well i'll not say the rich man uh, i'll say the the middle class uh, because most of the people here in Egypt, uh, the, poor, the, the, the poorer people, uh, would not buy a bike. Uh, would buy a bike, for uh, example, a Honda VTX, which is an older model, would be too expensive for them. So they'd rather buy a 150cc uh, Chinese bike. Right. Uh, yeah, that's the main difference. While we ride uh, uh, newer bikes, better bikes, uh, bigger sized engine bikes, so that that's the that's the main problem that we face. So everything we have to do, you have to do it online. Now, do you guys ride two by two, <laughs> side by side, or do you ride uh, staggered or single file? I think you said two by two. You cut out. Yes, two by two is. Okay, that's cool. Um, do you guys is your setup like? Do you have a road captain and? Do you have a do you have a setup like traditional motorcycle clubs or something slightly different or? Um, well, basically, the the highest officer is our road captain. Whoever is the highest officer is usually it's the president. If the president is not available for any reason, then the the vice president then goes down the line. Hmm. Not on. So you don't have a specific like road captain spot. No, or... no, no, no. A lot of clubs in the U.S. operate like that. Uh, Shaggy and I were talking about that the other day. Um, uh, I, know, so I, know, you know, I know of clubs out there where the sergeant does it. Right. Right. Um, that's really cool. Um, do you uh, – well, let me see. Uh, let's see. We have a question here for uh, Motorhead. Motorhead, what do older clubs in Brazil do differently than the rest of the world? Would you know that? Then the rest of the world, <laughs> or the rest of the <laughs> well, well, okay. That's, that's I, I don't know if you'd be able to know that, but <laughs> well, I, I mean, one thing that doesn't happen here in Brazil a lot is the motorcycle clubs here are not territorial. You know, they're just how can I say it? Just a bunch of guys trying to have fun. In the <coughs> uh, we we have our jobs you know monday through saturday or monday through sunday depends on where you work and so there's a lot of motorcycle clubs inside the same territory and there's not a turf war going on here uh we have a, a, a small percentage of one percenter motorcycle clubs here and even the one percenters are not territorial you know they're Sometimes there's there's a little bit of a fight between them, but it's not not a great deal like it is outside Brazil, and um, the rest of the, the the stuff is the same. You know, they you have to to have a, your motorcycle. You have to you don't accept women inside a one percent motorcycle club. But I think that the main difference is that. Here in Brazil, motorcycle clubs are not territorial. I, I think it's, it's the greatest difference. Okay. I see a friend of mine in the room. I want to give him a shout out because he's got an awesome YouTube channel. People should go and check out, yeah? The, mili the Military Biker. Awesome YouTube channel. Go and check him out. Oh, we check need to check out the Military Biker. His YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, check out his YouTube channel. He does some good stuff on there. I tell you, really enjoyable. He does too, and he's uh, definitely um, my kind of guy. 
I just noticed him. I just, I just noticed him in the room. You see, and I've been following him a long time. I just wanted to give him a shout. <laughs> <laughs> what, what question did I not ask, uh, Motorhead? Am I? No, it's, no, no. It's uh, Juan asked that question, and I told him that if you didn't ask it on, on the air, you know, I would come back to the, the comment session and answer him in private. Oh, okay, I see. So we're doing okay. Then we're trying to answer yeah. all the questions. How do we donate to the cause? We got to, man, we got to absolutely answer that one. You can hit the super chat button over there uh, if you want, or you can, uh, I've got all kinds of stuff up over here that you guys can look at and see uh, how to donate to us. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can hit, uh, st give us some stars. Uh, this is what I'm for. Okay, I'm just looking through the questions to see. Actually, I got uh, a question for Muhammad. If it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mohammed, I know in Brazil and Germany, there's uh, American one percenter clubs that have chapters there. Is there anybody in Egypt from uh, America? Uh, yes. Like club boys? Okay. Yes, you don't yes, have yes. names. I was just curious. Yeah, of course. But just one club, yes. Okay. Somebody said, is there a Pharaoh's MC in Egypt? No, there's not. <laughs> there actually is that club here in the States. Yeah, there's that club here oh, in the States. You're right. They got a chapter know. here in Missouri. It's even the car club, isn't it, in the States for low wider cars? Faros? A lot the of yeah. Hispanic guys. I've, uh, I've seen them on uh, YouTube, some reports about them. Somebody said they have a question for you, Sven. How much of Europe do you ride around, or do you just stay in Germany? Um, I was up to the European North Cape in Norway. Then uh, I was down to uh, Spain, to Istanbul and Turkey, uh, whole Europe. The last few years, it was mostly Germany, or I visited uh, one time my sister in uh, Great Britain. So uh, maybe if you're allowed to, I would ask Dibber. My sister's located in Andover. Is it far from your place? So maybe we can and have an aid did, did, did you say Andover? Andover, yeah. With an A, Andover. Yeah, yeah. I got I got family in Andover, so uh, yeah. If you ever get to Andover, give me a call. That's in Hampshire, man. That's not that's not too far. That's, a, that's about an hour's drive from where I am. So yeah, we'll meet up and we'll have a few beers, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Andover. Yeah, I got I got relatives that live in Andover. It's a little village, isn't it? Um, I never was to. I visited my sister when she was uh, living in Portsmouth. So uh, yeah, and and uh, and uh, yeah, Andover is a really nice little place. It's a nice little village. They've got some nice pubs down there with some local real ales. We could have a few beers down there, man. No problem. Yeah, sure, cool. I know, I know a few few of the clubs down there as well. I could sort of sort up some introductions for you. Yeah, my sister is related to one of the guys from uh, one of the clubs down there. Ah, well, then you've got it already made. <laughs> <laughs> foot in the door and all that yeah we'll see <laughs> yeah but you if you get over to the uk and you're in andover yeah just hook me look me up on facebook or whatever and yeah we'll arrange and we'll have a we'll sink a few of the old beers together man i'm rather partial to a few of the germans you know starts, yeah. I, 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 well i'll rent a room you know at one of the hotels down there and get on the old jägermeister like you know that's sure. what i'm talking <laughs> about <laughs> <laughs> Jägermeister is a hell of a drug. Yeah, it's good, isn't it, man? <laughs> yeah, but not the next morning. Not the next morning. That's where you just keep hitting it. I mean, you know. Yeah, that's right, man. The only you way you on... beat that hangover that, that Jägermeister does is you just look yeah, at you yourself get on in the, the old... mirror and just pile the bottle again. <laughs> that's right. You get on, them old Yo get on them old Jäger bombs, as we call them. You know, you fill up the old short jar, you know, glass with a Jäger straight out the freezer, man. Then drop it into a pint of beer, man. Boom, drop that old torpedo and away you go. <laughs> that kind of drink is called submarine in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's torpedo, man. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. You drop it, man. It's like a depth charge, you know. <laughs> yeah. Somebody said yeah, for me you? personally, this is the beauty of the MC world, bringing folks together despite different patches. It's all the same road, same passion, same wind, different strokes for different folks, but the united 
by the same passion, which is our love for the iron. Uh, why don't uh, let let's do this? So why don't each one of you guys, host included, uh, just give me a couple minutes of what it's like for you riding uh, with that wind in your face. So uh, let's start with you, Sven. Kind of freedom, as long as the gas is in the tank. <laughs> it's it's yeah it's it's um, pendant to the everyday business, to the stress of the of the week, of the work, of the job. It's it's feeling free, impress impress yourself, impression of myself, how my bike looks, how I dress up. It's 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 like a piece, big piece of uh, paper where you put your piece of art on. It's maybe it's expressed a bit too big now, but I guess all you guys know what I mean. You, you can be yourself. You can uh, represent yourself to the public, to your club, to the other folks, like the way you want. You can dress up like you want, uh, wear this and that, and and uh, leather jeans, whatever, army pants, uh, Harley shirt, Indian shirt, whatever, and. Uh, you can be like you want to be. You know, you're not in this pressure to 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 fit in any stereotype. Normally, uh, okay, we have stereotypes on the set too, no question. But dirty, what's it what's it like for you? Well, you know, it, riding motorcycles is everything. You know what I mean? I mean, that's being in being in the club, riding motorcycles. That's takes top priority nine times out of 10 in my fucking life. You know, I mean, yeah, there's family, there's work, but at the same time, when I'm with my family or at work, I'm thinking about riding motorcycles, you know, that's the top of the conversation whenever I'm not talking about, you know, work or family or whatever. I mean, it's always, you know, what are we doing to the bike? Where are we going? Who's going with us? Let's go there. I mean, it's everything, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what my life would be like if I couldn't ride a motorcycle, to be honest with you. You know, it's everything. Tank? Yeah, I mean, Dirty said it all. I mean, it centers me. Uh, you know, I, I, I dream about riding a motorcycle. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I had dreams about riding my bike last night. I mean, you know, so it's uh, in a world that's gone chaotic. It's one true aspect that I truly have the most control over of the things that go on out there, including those assholes out there trying to kill me. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you know is there... You know, do you think about, you know, dying on a motorcycle every time I throw my fucking leg over that thing? But it's my fear, and I control it. It's mine. And uh, I, I really, I can't think of what it would be like not to be able to ride. Uh, Shaggy. Oh, man. Um, let's see. Uh, whether it's <laughs> hot, cold or hot, uh, windy, calm, whether it's uh, wet or dry it doesn't matter um there are very little words that could put in uh that would explain the importance of how great and wonderful it is to go down the road at 100 mile an hour with your club brothers next to you behind you in front of you the sound of the road the vibration of the bike the the, the feel of the old lady's tits on your back um you know the the just pure horsepower that's underneath your legs that you've uh, put your hands your blood your sweat your tears into making that motor what it is there's so many things that uh go, just ex could explain the feeling but um we don't have enough time on this show it is an overwhelming peace it's an overwhelming calm it is a, a way to uh um become part of, and, and become one with the earth. Absolutely. Muhammad. Um, to me, it's about the camaraderie, about my brothers in the road, about the journey, about the people I've met, about the people I'll meet. Uh, it means a lot to me. It's, it's, it's the one constant uh, like I think Tank said, it's the one constant thing when everything in the world is going crazy. It's the thing that I can control. 
I can control when I want to ride, where I'm going, what I'm heading to, who's coming with me, who's not coming with me. Uh, that that's that's the, that's the best thing about it. Um, Gibber. Well, I I don't really want to sort of start sounding like a parrot because <laughs> like everybody in the room has basically already said what I would have said myself anyway. But I think I put up, a, you've got to bear in mind that there was a time when I thought I wasn't going to be able to ride a motorcycle again. There are those people in this room that know my history, people like Shaggy and people like John Black Dragon know I've, I, I've got a bone disorder, you know, and um, I was actually removed from the road, forcibly removed from the road by the authorities in the country I live in because uh, I was having, you know, major treatments to uh, treat what was wrong with my body and I wouldn't stop riding, you know. So the fact that I was going through chemotherapy treatments and still riding, that should tell people what riding meant to me and what it still does. And uh, I was threatened and threatened by the doctor that he would contact the what we've got here is the, the DVLA, which control your license and everything. And the doctors did. They carried through with their threat because I wouldn't stop riding. I was turning up for my treatments and stuff, you know, barely able to take the bike off the stand, you know. And they, they took my license away for, for like over a year. They took my license away until I was fit, until the doctors contacted them and said, look, he's fit enough to ride again now. You can give him back his entitlement to ride a bike. If you want to know how I felt when I got that license back and what it felt like for me to be back on a bike, there's a video on my YouTube channel. When I was very first allowed to ride a motorcycle again, I went out and bought one. You want to know what it feels like for me to ride a motorcycle? Go and check out that video. That's awesome. You know, it's... You know, uh, here in Brazil, we have a saying that goes something like this. Um, I like to talk to smart people. So when you see me talking to myself, don't bother me because I'm on a meet. <laughs> 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 and I think, uh, you know, I when I was younger, when I was, you know, 12, 13, I used to ride with my dad. And uh, being on the back of his motorcycle, I, I, I you know, I had a, a therapy time, you know, just me and myself. And I, I started to talk to myself about all my problems. And then there are three magical places in the life of a person. When you're taking a dump, when you're taking a shower, and when you're riding. You know, that's what about when you're having a jump, a dump, when you're, a jump. When you're... Yeah. But what about when you're having a jump, when you're in the arms of a beautiful woman and you're having a jump? Well, then you have to, to you know, think about something else so you can last longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, and uh, those three places, they for sure, they will bring you answers that you could not have any other place in your day. You know, you're having troubles, you're having uh, something you have to sort out, and suddenly, when you're inside your helmet, that's the magical place where the answers pops up. You know, that's so. Writing is a therapy. Writing is, you know, it's. It's magical. It's it's a gateway to another world, and I I think it's kind of that. Look at this, Lupus. We've already got twenty dollars towards your yeah. fund. Coming in, man. Oh shit, man. I don't even know how much the bike will cost yet. <laughs> there are already people done. Mel, yeah. thank you yeah. so much. We'll, I'll so get much. this right over to your uh, you uh, your uh, PayPal or whatever you got tomorrow morning or tonight when we get off, but. Yeah, look here, man. You already got twenty bucks towards your phone. I told you. Damn. Didn't I tell you? I told you, didn't I? Yo, BD. Uh, I need. I need to to say hello to, for, to two friends of mine who are watching us tonight. One is Lisa Leith. Uh, she's always, you know, watching my my live streaming on Wednesday. Wednesday Her name night. is uh, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa Lee. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. She's quality. Yeah. 
and yeah, we uh, all know her. <laughs> yeah. And Chrissy, Chrissy Watkin, I, I think that's how it's pronounced. She's another amazing person that, I don't know, man, I speak Portuguese. Nobody speaks Portuguese, you know, with Brazil, Portugal, and a few countries in Africa. And they still come to, you know, show their support. That's, that's you know, I, I have, uh, I'm yeah, speechless. Somebody asked Thank about your channel. What's the name of your channel? It's Motorhead Moto Clube. It's, uh, I, I think Lisa answered to that person. I, I think it's someone from, from New York, if I'm not mistaken. It's so it's Moto Clube yeah. is Motorhead, M O T. There it is, M O T O R. Here, let me bring it up here. What well, what you should do, what you should do, John, is is get everybody's YouTube channel URLs and put them in the description of the live stream video, and then when people come to the video later on, they can go straight to those YouTube channels just through the URL link in the description. So what I'm going to do, Dibber, is put the uh, UR link in the description. Uh, so that when people come to the channel later, they'll be able to go directly to it. Look at this. <laughs> oh, man. Daz, thank you. Look at this, man. That that motorcycle will be paid for before we know it. Oh I can't wait God. to see you out there on that bike, bro. You bet. Um, let's see. Uh, does Muhammad have a channel here on YouTube? Muhammad, do you guys have uh, a channel? Uh, no, actually, no, no. We don't have none. Okay, but no. you do have a Facebook page. Yes, and what is the Facebook page? And I'll put it up. Uh, Horror Reapers MC Egypt. So it's Horus Reapers, H O U R S R E A P E R S. Uh, for those uh, of you. I'll uh, uh, tell you how to find it easy, John. Go to his profile and he's put some posts mm. up where he shared stuff from his Facebook group. That's how I found his Facebook group like that earlier on. When okay. we were talking, you know, when we were talking and yes. you said, ah, oh, this is the guy. I yeah. went onto his Facebook and there was a post there that he shared from his group. Boom, straight to the group, man. So my, my, you know, uh, the guys on this, this channel, they're monsters. When I, when I mentioned your club, Dibber had already <laughs> pulled it up and was checking you guys out for you, before we ever even talked to you. So it's, uh, uh, you know, well, these, you've got to bear in mind, I've got an ancestral interest in Egypt and anything that goes on there anyway, you know? Absolutely. So um, I will tell you guys, for me, uh, motorcycle riding has been in my life since I was maybe four years old. And I cannot imagine uh, not having um, this expression of myself um somebody said the dibber said i don't want to parrot other people but i just think it's amazing that you're from egypt you're from europe you're from from northwest uh united states you're from southwest united states you're from germany uh uh um Shaggy from another planet. We all <laughs> <laughs> come together, and um, we uh, we we uh, all come together, and we all feel this same damn way. Uh, check this. Another donation. Jeremiah is Jeremiah. for Lubis Bike Fund. Jeremiah and Th Theism. Yeah, another quality guy. Excellent. Man, this this is and, great. And so I will tell you this: uh, Jeremiah has had a a lot of uh, issues um, yeah. in his life, uh, and he is a close friend to the channel. And I think he watches all of us. And uh, this is this really for him to make this donation really does um, come from his heart and his soul because he's uh, he's been through a lot, and I'm very proud of him. He's, That's uh, quality, isn't it? Eh? Yeah. But this is this is what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Helping out somebody. I mean, obviously, for me, you know how about how I use the word brother, but he is for us. He's he's like a brother of the road. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, he's another one. They say, yeah, it'd be great. I can't wait to see the videos now. I'm gonna have to go and hunt out his YouTube channel and then 
when it, once he gets his bike sorted, he hopefully if he gets a, ch a a good chop shop to build him up one, you know, we can he can do the updates with the videos and show us how it's all going, you know, and, and then yeah. that final one where he gets out on the ride, you know, that would be awesome. Well, that's my intention, man. I show every step of it, and uh, you yeah. know, just like I said, when you do something good, you know, you go on your social media and say, "Hey, guys." Here it is, you know, uh, everything you've done. Here it is. Yeah, it's, that's quite. I can't. I, that's that, that's that's something that's cool to follow on on a YouTube channel as well. You know. Yeah, well, we're absolutely we're gonna uh, follow you every step of the way uh, over at your uh, website, uh, Motor. Uh, not your website, but your YouTube channel, Motorhead, M O T O R H E A D as one word, and then yeah. Motor Clube. Mot Moto M O T O. Oh, C L U, yeah, yeah, C L U B E. Moto Clube is M O T O. Yes. We would say Moto Club, Moto Club with an E on the end. Moto Clube. So uh, I'll have all these links up for you guys. Christopher says, if this is brotherhood, I want to be involved. I feel stress free at this round table. Right on. Um, this round table is very, um, it's 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 very wonderful to me. Uh, how we all came together. Shaggy just sent a message. He says that his uh, internet went down, and he wants to say that it was uh, a great show, and it was so cool meeting all the other guys. So that's what he has to say. And yeah, uh, we, uh, Black Dragon, uh, another guy named Black Dragon, one of uh, my close uh, viewers. I, you know, I think I make friends with all my viewers. He says motor riding a motorcycle makes him free as a bird someone asked uh is finn on youtube finn you finn you don't have a youtube channel do you no i don't have i just have my facebook page sven lake forest yeah. hit, hit, hit me up to... on facebook sven i do dips i do yeah it is dibber 39 as in the word 39 dibber 39 yep. already stumbled about it all oh, right okay <laughs> send me a message in messenger so i know it's you because i'm a little bit funny about who i let on it uh, a lot of a lot of bit funny <laughs> <laughs> i'm anal <laughs> um um somebody said for those that get it uh right shaggy is riding in a zen place um okay so somebody else just donated uh so look at that man they love you. you yeah, I, that motorcycle in no time. Man, I'm starting to feel like I'm gonna have to, you know, do some street yeah. here. As uh, lucky, you yeah, know, lucky guys, RKMC. I, I, you know, I just, I just think, I just find it just, I don't know. It still grabs me that a guy in England named Dibber. Uh, was is somebody I was able to talk to and one day I'll go ride with and I feel like I would be able to ride with Tank or Dirty or Sven or Lubis or or Muhammad at any time that I I got to your area or you came to mine uh there would be a place for you to lay your head there'd be a motorcycle for you to ride there would be uh uh you know you would be home yeah and and that is the same that would happen with brothers of my own MC. So um, the just this feeling that we get from place people all over the world, all of us loving motorcycles the way that we do, and the brotherhood that we built because of it. Kind of crazy. You know, BD, uh, I, I if I may say something. Uh, you know, when when I when I. Told my wife that I'm, I was going to be participating on this live streaming. I don't know, man. She she put on her head that your name is is Dragon Ball, you know, because of that Japanese cartoon or something. Yeah. And uh, I said, <laughs> I said, baby, don't don't call him Dragon Ball. He's gonna, you know, think he's going. He's talking about. He's going to think you're talking about his nuts. <laughs> and and she said, well, he he's pretty nuts because he thinks he's you know uh, taking you to the states without me. And I, she's crazy about Christmas, man. She she's she's watching all the Christmas movies in Netflix, and she wants to spend some Christmas in United States. 
I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get, I will have to get her to United States some Christmas. I you forgot. Know, I didn't realize you were married when I told you I, I was bringing you over here. I didn't realize you were married. Uh, no, but you we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to figure out something. <laughs> but no, that, I am crazy if I think you're going to come over here without your wife. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but you know, the, I I told well, uh, John John invited me to be on his live streaming tonight, and she said, "Who's John? Dragon Ball?" I say, "No, baby, Black Dragon." <laughs> I'm calling him Dragon Ball because you know people will think you're talking about his nuts, and she said, "Well, he's nuts because he thinks he's you know taking you to the states without me." And uh, that's it, man. It's sh she's crazy about the United States. She see those Christmas movies, and she wants to have that kind of dinner and th those Christmas decorations and all this stuff. I don't know, man. I don't know what to do with the wife. And the Santa on every street corner. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's, she's, I don't know. She she thinks she's gonna find some kind of magic there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I hate Christmas. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't care. <laughs> Since my grandmother died, I, it's, it's not being it's not the same. And, yeah, but she, she loves it. Oh yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. You know, when we lose Chris, those Chris, Christmas people. is not my thing. I, 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 I think it's all too commercial. You know, it's lost its way. It's lost yeah. its purpose. It is. Yeah, uh, it has. Uh, Dibba, do you know the song from Eric Idle? Fuck Christmas. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric, I, Eric Idle is awesome. You know, yeah, he's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he used to do a show uh, with uh, another one of his uh, one of his friends called Derek and Clive. Okay. You should check them out. It's called Derek and Clive, and and uh, they were audio um, recordings that they used to do. You know, there's some okay. real bad, there's some real badass stuff in there if you like really twisted comedy. <laughs> yeah, I, I check it out. I check it out. Yeah, 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 Eric, Eric Idle, he's like he's like one of the uh, Monty Python crew as well. One of the old school guys. Yeah. Yeah. He I was like, one uh, of Monty Python. Yeah. I like the King's Father Christmas. Give us your money. That's a good one too. <laughs> we'll beat you up if you don't hand it over. <laughs> so here in Brazil, have a, a punk rock band called the Rotten Kids, and they they have a song named uh, Santa Claus, Son of a Bitch. It's of course it's all in Portuguese. Yeah, that's but real rotten of those kids to have that. It's just rotten. Yeah, I, I do a Christmas show. I don't know if uh, any of you guys have ever seen it, and. Uh, it's uh i have a host on there called wino claus and uh he hates santa claus as much as what i do <laughs> you should okay. tune in it gets it gets a little bit lively <laughs> I, I i always thought santa claus was a little bit of an arsehole you know because yeah yeah i don't know if you've people have ever noticed but all the rich kids always seem to get really good presents and the poor kids yeah. always seem to get a piece of coal you know yeah. So yeah, I, I still think Santa's a bit of an arsehole, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, that's that's the whole base <laughs> of the, the, the music. <laughs> <laughs> if you work about a million years, you can get some di a diamond on a piece. Of um, listen, I want to take a moment here to thank the organization We Ride Bikers for Life. Uh, they presented me with this award. Uh, this is my second award. This one is... Um, the, their BFL Ground and Pound Excellent Award, Excellent Award, Excellence Award, for uh, as they said, thank you for continuing to show positive images in the biker community to the highest esteem. And so uh, this, you know, this came yesterday, and I was just so pleased to get it. Um, and I just, uh, I'm, I'm just excited that this I got in, this I got in 2021, uh, 2020, from Incom for uh, uh, my work on the channel, and this I got in 2021. So, cool. I mean, it's, it's really kind of cool to get these things. I'm so thankful that folks would acknowledge uh, the work that we've done. Dibber has it's been absolutely with amazing. I'll tell you, it's amazing. It's, it certainly beats a brick with a letter wrapped around it thrown through your window, doesn't it? <laughs> Dibber has been with me since the beginning, uh, and he yes. has seen... The, uh, the hell that this channel went through trying to get started. So you should be sending me an award. 
Uh, you know what? I have one. For you. <laughs> He'll I probably be that brick through the window with a letter tied to it. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is just amazing uh, that that uh, you know we've been going to, we've been going five years now, and it's uh, been yeah. amazing. And then to have all you cool, very cool guys, Tank and Dirty and Hollywood and uh, Carlos uh, Wild uh, on twos, Dibber, um, Shaggy. To have all you stand-up guys on the show, and then Muhammad and uh, 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 Lubis and and Sven, Sven has been following me forever from the Black Forest. Um, and I'm telling you, some of you guys have like taken a personal interest in me when my house is burned down, when when my uh, uh, when I've been sick, when I had heart surgery, all these things. Um, uh, some of you guys have been with me so long through the ups and downs, like we've been. You know, with Dibber, he as he's had his things he's been through, and uh, now we're gonna watch Lubis uh, ride that, you know, get that motorcycle, build that motorcycle, and ride it, and we're gonna be there when you when you're leading your pack, Prez. We're gonna be there to watch that, so it's uh, really cool. I, I think the first the first time you ever commented on one of my videos was when I was going through my last bout of chemo treatment back in twenty six about twenty sixteen, I think it was. That's when I talked to your brother who took over your channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you sp spider. Spider rider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyway, I think that's cool for tonight. Uh, we've been at it a bit. Um, I just wanted people to kind of get a glimpse that motorcycle clubbing is um, universal. It's all over the world. These tribes of people get together under a set of protocols wrapped around the love and the passion for motorcycle riding we all have this crazy passion to be on a bike then we find brothers that we can share it with like family and some of them disappoint us some of them let us some of them let us down some of them are more stingy than they should be others are just uh just mean and can't get along with anyone but we tend to love these folks for exactly who they are nobody understands it our women don't understand uh, how could you go deal with those guys after they turned on you? <laughs> uh, you don't understand. I'm drawn to this because these people, when we get on motorcycles together, we all feel exactly the same way. We're riding. The sun is pounding down. It's so hot you can't breathe. It's so cold you can't feel. It's so wet. It goes all the way through. your your. There, like I told Deborah today, there's no such thing as, as waterproof. It goes all the way down no, to the no. sack. In I, I, I liked your comment when, when I was talking about switching out gloves in a in a in a blizzard when I was on my way back from Berlin, uh, riding up to Holland, you know, with a few of the boys, you know, switching out the gloves, you know, I had a bike with a fairing. I'll be switching the gloves out. I'll be putting one pair of gloves down between the engine cases and the and the and the and the panels of the fairing, getting them warm enough, and then switching them out like four minutes down the road <laughs> <laughs> i said Dibber, the, the, the warm gloves are only going to be warm four minutes three four five minutes <laughs> but that's good but like you know sven knows you know there's a petrol station every 15 clicks so yeah. <laughs> you pull in Lucky there you wrap your hands around a cup of coffee out the old coffee thing uh, and, and then you go off you go again because i don't think people realize where people like i said to you i think people got a wrong idea about your where sven is now it can get real real dodgy killer cold you know and and all the people you you feel that looks and all the people say uh, think what an asshole to ride in the rain or the snow and sleet or whatever <laughs> and you think yeah 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 yeah, it, it, it actually, it's. It, I, I don't know if it's the same for you, but for me, when I, like I say, I mean, we were riding back from Berlin. Uh, we've been on a, a big run, a few of us, uh, you know, in that freezing cold conditions and stuff, you know, I kind of got a high off of it, you know. It was like, a, see if we can make it to this next petrol station without, you know, the, the hands turning literally to ice, yeah. you know. It's, I mean, you've got the wind chill factor as well. I mean, it was already minus whatever the hell it was, plus the wind chill factor. It had been freezing cold rain when we set off. And that rain, you know, with that eastern wind that comes across there, you know, from the east, you know, yeah. that, that, that turned it to snow. And we were in a blizzard, man, before we got, you know, it's a, And I don't think people realize how quick that weather can change. 
Yeah. You know, and Berlin, and, and Berlin it, can it be get, cold as hell. And it, get, it and kind of gives you around. Yeah, and I don't think there's a part of your body that you can actually keep warm, even the arse that you're sitting on. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, well uh, you gotta get you the heated seat that, that victory has, bro. <laughs> and you can be happy that you don't have to wrinkle your undies because everything's wet after a few yeah. <laughs> miles. It runs down your neck. You all know it, and then you feel it like, oh no, my ass got in wet. Oh no, no, fuck. <laughs> oh. Sorry, so, no uh, cursing. No cursing, I know. No, <laughs> yeah, that's been blown away tonight, guys. Uh, so the uh, 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 the process says, uh, is this uh, this this must be Portuguese? Okay, yeah, it God, is. No, thank you for your shows. Uh, something, something. Uh, fa family, what you thank say? You for a, thank you for an amazing show, and God bless your family. Ah, I wrote. The... I read about six words out of there. <laughs> You know, uh, I was looking at the, the comment session, and he wrote that in, uh, I guess, in, in, in many languages. You know, I mean, ah. he wrote it to me in Portuguese. He wrote it to Mohammed in, in. He's got it in Chinese Arabic language. there as well, man. And uh, oh wow, yeah, he took he took the time to translate the words, you know, and just comment so we can understand him better. Uh, that's the military it. biker sends us something in German. Uh, should I translate it? Yeah. Uh, the military biker wrote, uh, Hello Sven, I uh, live for 18 years in Germany and uh, I laughed every minute. And my son was uh, giving birth in Hanover. It's my hometown too. And without any doubt, Germany will always have a place in my heart. Wow. That is really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, that is really cool. Somebody remembers you, Dibber, from that SOA video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the old infamous SOA video. Yeah, uh, that's infamous. Where, that's where I found infamy. You. Infamy. And they all had it infamy after that one. <laughs> all the okay. Sons of Anarchy people come and uh, they still attack that video to this day. Oh, or they wow. try, they tr well, they try to. They, they attack it via other videos. I've just got, you know, it's you got to bear in mind, you know yourself. I've got two uh, moderators that look after the comments on that on that channel, on my channel. You know, they they, and it wasn't really fair for them. Every single day going in there, and there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments of people talking absolute bullshit about getting guns and wanting to come and shoot me because I was <laughs> upsetting them about their favourite TV show and all this sort of stuff. You know, it's just ridiculous garbage. You know. It's, television show pull your neck in for fuck's sake you know this one's for you uh muhammad uh so wow i mean uh this is really cool man um so listen thank you guys all uh dibber and you guys over there uh sven uh all you guys muhammad everyone for uh uh lewis for getting up so early in the morning and being with us on the show i don't think this has ever been done before this is like a some sort of record or something in terms of uh, what we're doing. The round table is really awesome to have all these different people from all these different clubs. And I just want to thank you all. Tank, Dirty, thank you guys for becoming uh, co-hosts on the show. So you guys will be seeing them every week in. And um, Dibber, thank you again so much for, for being back. Uh, love you guys all. Look forward to riding a motorcycle with you guys all. Uh, look forward to pounding with y'all. Uh, right Ghost on. Eagle says Dibber is the first biker I watched on YouTube before Black Dragon and Hollywood. So Dibber's the godfather of us. So anyway, the, the, he's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess you guys know my music game working. So uh, I will be bidding you guys adieu. You guys take care. Uh, I will talk to you guys all on WhatsApp and stuff like that. Dibber, thanks again so much. Love you all. Uh, that's all right, man. Anytime. Have a great night. Thanks, PD. Thank you. Good night, all. Good night, Finn. Thanks, Black night. Dragon. That Thank was you. awesome, man. Thank you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Ah, wow, man. Uh, just to spend all that great time uh, with those great bikers. Did you guys notice uh, when they talked about what it was like to ride a motorcycle? Uh, they uh, They all...
sounded the same. They all talked about the same things. Um, effing crazy, man. Effing crazy. Um, so, uh, we're going to be doing more of this stuff on the uh, round table. Uh, we're going to be talking to people from all over the world, interviewing people, doing all kinds of fun things on the show, talking about the motorcycle club social construct that we've all gotten ourselves into and that means so much to us all. I want to thank you all for tuning in with me tonight. Please make sure to get my newest book, The uh, President's Bible, on sale at blackdragonsgear.com, also on Amazon and Kindle. But remember, we have the Sergeant in Arms Bible. We have the Prospects Bible, which is number one required reading in over a thousand motorcycle clubs worldwide. And we have the social, uh, the uh, the uh, 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 public relations officers Bible, uh, all there for you. My newest book is coming out uh, right around Christmas sometime, and we're just going to keep uh, putting down the knowledge, man. You can get us on Black Dragon Biker TV YouTube, Black Dragon Biker TV Facebook, uh, Black Dragon Biker TV Instagram, uh, and our online news magazine is uh, BikerLiberty.com, and then. Our broadcast is simulcast on our podcast station, wherever you get podcasts. It's called The Dragon's Lair, L-A-I-R, Motorcycle Chaos. And I've been doing this biker thing my entire life, and it's just so great to share all this with you guys. It's cool. It's absolutely cool. You can get my books autographed at blackdragonsgear.com. I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Um just really excited and just really cool man just to, to be around you guys all uh, it's been a great great time anyway i'm black dragon thanks for tuning in and uh get skinny let me see i uh, get me some outro stuff here uh let's see yeah that's it that's my two cents thanks for tuning in and get skinny. Bang. Thank you.